Perkins Bible Study. Today is September the 22nd. Wow, we're getting through this year, although it's um it's, it's had a lot of challenges. Um, but we want to just thank God this morning that we are here and thank him that he's still alive. And, um, well, of course he's alive. Thank God that we're still alive. And um, and that he is still in the miracle working business, and um, we need a move from him. And so, um, Dr. Vander Ark, would you open us in a word of prayer? I'd be delighted to. Our Father, who art in heaven, oh God, how great you are. And we give praise and thanks to you for this new day. And we thank you that we can begin this day by calling upon your name and by studying your word and your will for our lives. So we give you praise and thanks for John and Vera May and for all of the Perkins family, for they have put together this program where your name will be honored and praised. Oh God, bless us in this time together. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Dr. Vander Ark. Um, this morning we are, we have, um, John Perkins, who all of you know, we don't need any introduction, but he, he is first and foremost a Bible teacher. And so this morning, if you have your Bibles, um, could you get them out and we will um, begin. Uh, I'm gonna, J, JP is going to teach us this morning um, about biblical Christianity, which is authentic Christianity. And um, he's going to be looking at 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and Hebrews chapter 11. So if you have your Bibles, um, get those out. And John Perkins, what? give us what God's given you. Yeah. They, they say this new book I'm working on is count it all joy when you fall into pain and tribulation. And, and, and the pain and tribulation go with uh, this life, living it out. Man, that was born a woman that was full of trouble. He's a few days and full of trouble. And and so and and in this book I'm saying that uh, count it all joy. Uh, and joy is the highest of human praise toward God. When you say joy, the next thing you say is rejoicing. Uh, just like when you say hallelujah, the next thing you say is hallelujah joy and rejoices. I, I want to, God is language. That's his name. God is language. He loves us so much. He communicates to us. He wants to communicate to us. He can communicate to us in your own tongue. That's how much he loves you. So you don't miss it. And so there is a, a wrong battle. There's a wrong side of that communication. And that's confused language. That's babble. That's what creates anger, animosity, and fights. That's how we lose our human dignity. We was created to, to reflect God. He was a creator and we were to reflect the image. We were to be creative. The essence of God is the little children sang the song. Yes, Jesus loved me. Yes, Jesus loved me. But the Bible tells me so. Jesus loved the little children all the children of the world. Red, brown, and yellow, black and white, 
They all are precious inside. God loves the little children of the world. The essence, the essence of God, the essence who Abraham met out in the desert is it. He's a God of love. And he's a God who wants to make us his friends. That's the way you live within God. The fruit of spirit is how we really live in God. And if we produce in that kind of fruit of our life, God is rewarding us all the time. So the fruit of spirit is what we are here to live for, provide for. God, God just has come out of here. He loves us so much. Don't kill him. Don't kill him. Don't kill him. Let him breathe. Let him breathe. Let him breathe. What we have lost in this battle of war. Priscilla, we're not hearing anything. Priscilla, did his um, computer freeze? I think it froze since his screen went black. Okay, it looks like they left the room, so I'll keep an eye out for them. Um, and hopefully they are able to get their connection back. Sorry, guys. Good morning, Michelle. Good morning. Thank you for everything you're doing. Oh, no problem at all. See Grandma Perkins. Hello, Grandma Perkins. Y'all can uh, have a little conversation. Uh, Priscilla is trying to get everything, get them back on, online. Good morning, Elizabeth. Good morning, Jody. How you How doing? How are you? Good. Doing pretty good. It looks look quite cold up here. What, what did you say? It's cold in Connecticut. Oh, well, what's the temperature? Uh, it was 44 degrees when I woke up this morning. Oh, wow. So, no sleep. Same, same huh? thing in Columbus, Ohio. Oh. Uh, That's wintertime for us. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I'm looking forward to going back to 86 degree weather in a couple of weeks. Yeah. Nice Good dog. My 13 year old dog wants my coffee. It's wow. freezing in California. Is it? 64 degrees. Oh, wow. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> what part of California are you in, Nick? Uh, Chris? They're LAX, uh, Los Angeles area. Okay. Is that southern? Okay. Southern California. <laughs> we have, we have right? earthquakes and fires, though, to go with our yeah, weather. See you. Okay. Can you hear? Can you hear? Oh, you hear me? Yes. Oh, he's yeah. back. Okay. Got back, JP. Got her brother back. Yeah. Okay. Good morning, Mr. Sam. Just make sure. Oh, wait. Daddy, you must have something good to say this morning. <laughs> can, can you hear him? Can you hear us, Liz? Yes. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. If you can hear yes. me. Yes. yes, we can hear you. Okay. okay, I don't know where you stop hearing me, but what I'm trying to get to here 
is what is the essence of Christianity, what is the essence of the church, and what is a mission. And, and I'm making a definition now of what is the all in all of God. And I was just saying, the little children have a handle on that. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Good news, good news, Christ died for me. Good news, good news, I believe. Good news, good news, I live eternally. It's wonderful, extra good news. And when I'm really saying it, I'm trying to explain God, who is he? God is seeking for us. He loves us, he created us. He created the world for us to work with him in managing it. He is in such wisdom, but what God is altogether is a God of love. That's what I've been found. And love is God. And love is fellowship and discipleship and friendship. What we have now is Babel. Babel is confusion. Babel is when we lose the knowledge of God. When our mind becomes all messed up. God calls that a, a reprobate mind. That mind basically loves itself, the person who has that mind, more than they love God. That's our, that's our problem. We done racialized the world, all of us, all together, together. In Adam, we lost it. And we're trying to continue to talk babbles each other. He's trying to deconfuse our mind. Because he wants us to think about him, think about him, think about him, think about loving him with all your heart, all your soul, with all your mind. But Baba is fallen. Baba, Baba is the confusion and the misunderstanding that God is just. And he wanted a justice is an economic issue. Justice is a stewardship issue. Justice is, is understand that he created this world for us to manage and not to lead the poor out. We're the richest nation on earth ever been thought of. We got more bombs than anybody on earth have uh, been thought of. We got more air weapons and than anybody ever thought of. We are so confused and everybody else in the world, the African nation, Caribbean nation is doing better than us. We got the best hospital, best nursing home, the best scientists and the best university. And we are letting our people die. And we're letting us people die based on our own selfish will, of our own ego, our own ego. Sin is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. This is why we know that Jesus revealed as God. When he came in this world, these few years he lived, he didn't operate out of the lust of the flesh, lust of the eye in the pride of life. But, but he was tempted just like us. And now we don't turn that into Babylon. Babylon is fallen. But if we return to God, he returns to us. Uh, to know God is, is to believe in him first 
He even gives us the capacity to do that. He gives us the capacity to ask the question, what must I do to be saved? And his answer is always, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. But we have made hate a virtue. And so what I'm trying to do then is try to get us back to God if we can. That's our test. Let's read our test of our work on earth is to respond to God's love for us and come to know him better and then to make him known in the world. That's the exclusive all in all. Because if we do that, we are born of God. He that loves is born of God. He that loves knows God because God is love. And he wants us to, to love one another. That's what I'm trying to get over right now. I'm trying to get that over right now. That we call that word I've just went through, incarnational thinking. And if you think incarnational, if you think of what you don't know about God, and the things that you can't fix in the world, you're about as close to God as you can get. You, you are searching for God. You're seeking for God. Seeking you can find. God loves us so much, he gives us the inclination to want to know him. Oh, Lord, God takes an issue. But when you use it for your own will instead of God's will, Babylon began to get us. I disbelieve. So let me see, can I put this together? The incarnation of thought is the oldest thought in the Bible. This was back in eternity somewhere when the Trinity probably had a conversation together as one because they are one. He said, the God, the God that caused the light to shine out of darkness. Darkness is symbolic of sin and confusion. You need to walk in the light as he's in the light. Babylon is not walking in the light. God has created a, a light that can't go out sin and nothing else can put our life. Now, our problem then is our pride. We want to be God. When I first, my first teacher said, uh, he made a, a, a story about Satan being in hell, in heaven, and he was the brightest light that got there. And evidently he walked by some water or something. He saw himself in, the mirror in the water reflected. reflected and then he wanted to be God and he attacked Eve in the Garden of Eden. But, 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 but God won't leave us alone. He came into that garden. Our world is jacked up. Hate is dominating our society. It's even difficult for me to give this conversation here because somebody would rather not believe in it. They, they would really think that their political ideas add something to God. That's why I know we jacked up. We jacked up, we killing each other in the street. I'm, we're jacked up in Jackson and we're on our way if we haven't. In the black community, in my community, is to kill more black than they ever killed in the history of Mississippi. Blacks killing black. And white folk is doing it with the law enforcement office. They are squeezing life out. And they don't know that life is the essence of God. We don't know that. We don't know that. And we don't know that the only way to get rid of it is confess it to God. But we have created malice and have made malice a, 
a virtue. And so most of the people I'm speaking to now is a little bit jacked up. They're a little bit jacked up even as I tell them about love. They will tell me that the Republican love them the best. The Democrats love you, you better than me. And, and we're getting to fight over that nonsense. We are jacked up people. And God says, love one another. Love the God. And so this morning, that's why I want to take us back. We got to go back to the kindergarten. We got to go, and we got to reach our kids again that way. We, we, we got to obey God a little bit more. We got to get married. I watching these things I'm seeing in the world today. And they fitting to do something big and they all bring in that third girlfriend. Oh Lord have mercy. We, we are at a dark place folks. Now, let me tell you the good news. When you start to try and, and I've been doing this, particularly since I started writing this, my manifesto, I, I, I discovered there was one God, and there's one mediator between God and man, and that man, uh, Christ Jesus, and, and I discovered that that's what reconciliation is about. Him bringing us close to himself, in fact, he wants to come into us and he wants to live out his life through us. That is really what I think Christianity is about. And the way you do that is through what is called the fruit of the spirit. Those are the gifts that keep us from falling. These are the gifts that's going to get us to heaven. These are the gifts of redemption. Uh, this morning, we, First Corinthians, is going to be our teaching this morning. I'm giving you a background. I'm trying to build a platform that Babylon is falling. There, there's a theme in the Bible when you Babylon, God has to intervene. And whenever God intervenes in scripture in a big way, you can hear the overcast of this. When they knew God, they glorified him not as God. Neither was they thankful thankful for God's gifts. We became vain in our own imagination. Our foolish heart is darkened. It's dark because we turn away from God, just like Cain went out from the presence of God. And somebody say, Cain went out from the presence of God and it was night. And it would have been night ever since. When you go out from the presence of God, you walked off into darkness. John tells us that in 1 John. He tells us that in being together. He says, if we walk in light, as he is in the light, then we have fellowship, friendship, one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, God's son, cleanses us from all sin. This is a part of my manifesto. I've proven that purpose of God coming to the world. It's not a, it's not a so-called mission. It is the mission. It's not one of the reconciliation and something else. God brings us back to himself and he wants us to walk in the light as he's in the light so he can forget, for, for, so we have fellowship and friendship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ that never loses stain. That one blood, that, that, that blood of a woman, not the blood of a man, that one blood could keep on washing us from all of our sin. You know, we are jacked up about that. Well, uh, even if I turn around and say, if I would say, God love white people too. Some of my black folk could say, you love white folk, well you love other. If somebody, if I say, I love Black Lives Matter, white folk say, what in the hell are you talking about? 
We are jacked up. We are jacked up. We got to find out what it is. What it is is love. After we get, give the great gifts that God gives to the church to help manage our foolish souls, that's what those 12 gifts is about. Those, he put souls within the body of the church to let us fools know that he loves us and we ought to love one another. And he put each one of us there to help each other. We need each other. And we're trying to create more ways. The way to do that, the way, the way, we, the way we do that, is just find a little stuff wrong with somebody else and, and don't get, forgive people because the people you don't forgive, you think you're holding them hostage. You can't hold God hostage. He said, those people out there who won't forgive, give them two chances. Give them two chances. And if they don't take advantage of them, just bring it to me. Because I'm the only one that can really forgive sin. We don't know that. We are living in Babylon land. God created us to love. You, you can't. And so what I want to do now is if you got a background here to what I'm trying to say, what I'm talking about, I'm talking about coming to the end of yourself. Come to the end of what you know. You're now fixing to know God. When, when you find brokenness, you are fixing to know God. So God's going to put you together. God under that, understand that Humpty Dumpty and I fell off the wall. All of us and all of the Republicans the Democrat and all the king's men cannot put Hunter Dumpty together again. We need to be born again. We need to be born again. The smartest man, one of the smartest men of his day came to Jesus and said, at night, he was afraid of his own people. That's right now we're afraid of each other. We building these guns for each other. We were killing each other and we're using Babo, Babo. Not God loves the little children, all the children of the world. Brown, red, and yellow, black and white. We're all precious in his sight. I have to balance my teaching between telling white folk, I love you, and then I can say, oh, I, I better tell black folk a little bit first. So they they've been without knowing that a long time. And, and and they have been exploited a long time. And and and, and white folks and we'll get on black folks, no reparation. You can stop dreaming about that. Because white folks are concerned now about their own privilege. Their own privilege is making them sick. They don't know do their own privilege in the world. We are in Babylon land. So the church was born out of one of Paul's teaching in a little city called Kern, big, big city. And when they got Christ, when they came to know God, oh, it was so good for some of them. And they were just enjoying each other. And they were just doing everything and messing up the church and fighting over that. The man and man stepmother-in-law. I mean, this church was messed up. They were jacked up. And God decided to get them out of it. And that's what I'm gonna teach you this morning. I'm finna try to get us out of it. Trying to get you out of it. Get that kids down that tree. You, you got a tree. <laughs> get, get in that tree. Um, now, Listen to this one. God is love. Love is of God. He that loves is born of God and knows God. He that knows not God, who that loves not, knows not God because God is love. Oh, that is uh, what 
what they call when God is, when people are saying two or three things with one word, something like a ratana of something Not like, tomorrow? no, oh. it's, you, he just keep on telling you. Double things. entendre. Entendre. Yeah, that's, double entendre. Yeah, that's, that's a double one. That's a triple one. That God is love. He that loves is born to God. The acid test is to know God. The acid test is to know God, make him known, and to love him. And he promised us a gift forever. He gives us the gift to keep on giving. Man, we're going to where we can eat the fruit and, and drink the lee water, tea. We're going to live forever. He promised us that. Could anybody, he promised you that. He, he promised to, that you can be born again. You can be born of the Spirit of God. And you can love each other. Now, let me move towards, I'm trying to help us. So this church was all jacked up. They are messed up and jacked up, and they are Babylon. Babylon is language. It's confused language. Uh, this is the first time in my life that we had to get our leader, and we had to tell the people that got to hear our leader, well, he just lie all the time. Y'all accept his line. Everything else is okay. Everything else is okay. But uh, 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 our leader just lied. Uh, that's from Satan. That's Satan talk. That's Babel. That's Babel. Now, so he writes this letter and he tells them what it is. And so he says, uh, he talks about, we need each other with those 12 or so gifts that he gives to the church. The church is important. And there is no real biblical thought that there is a black church and a white church. That's what we get at all that. It ain't no biblical thought that there's more than one human race. That's not a biblical thought. That's not an incarnation thought. What I'm getting at here this morning, when you think about truth, you think about what's wholesome. You think about what's good. All that is good and wholesome come from God. And so he explained, and then he explained these most good and wholesome. The book thing was to, to speak for God. If you could speak for God, if you could speak all the tongues of man and of angels and didn't have love, you're nothing. He takes all of the gifts and reflects up on all of those. The most powerful, it was thinking of these are the greatest of the gifts in the time in which they live. That's 1 Corinthians 13. And then he puts that 12. It's 12, isn't it? 1 Corinthians 13, if I, could, if I speak in tongues of men. Go ahead, read it. Men or of angels, but do not have love. I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. Keep on talking. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge. And if I have a faith that can move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. Keep going. If I give all possess all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily not hurt. over thinking about yourself mm -hmm. and think that you're better than everybody else, and not preaching yourself. What we used to be talking about now is what we used to be talking about now. 
is love. Keep going. Keep going. Yeah, what we thinking about? Love wraps around everything that's good and wholesome. Come from God. Think on those things. Think on loving God. Think on your own brokenness. I'm telling you something here. You find God when you need him. You find God when you need him. We don't need the solution that comes from this verse. The God who caused the light to shine out of darkness. That this God has shined the light that we need into our hearts to give us the knowledge to get rid of this virus. We don't care about it. Those are something else and they don't believe the way I believe. They don't believe my social justice is a waste. God is too comprehensive to us. That, that was the first thing he did. He walked in the garden and had a social relationship with Adam and Eve. People are jacked up over that. They're jacked up over abortion. God is absolute life. From the womb to the tomb. He's Good morning. Womb to the tomb. I didn't go in yet. <laughs> I have, it could, I have fitness time. It could make you jacked up. Most, I meet so many people that are jacked up. I was preaching in a church, in a church, a pastor's conference, and one of these church of God, one of them, and there was almost a revival going on, and one of the deep, one of the preachers came over and asked me, did I speak in tongues? I said, what is this got to do with anything? That's like someone coming over and asking me, do I believe in abortion? You think I'm insane? You think I'm insane? I ain't gonna get mad with nobody about that. I, I'm gonna say people are lost, lost, lost. A, a, a little girl go out and, and get pregnant. If she go home, her daddy gonna beat her, her friends gonna beat her, everybody gonna beat her, and, and they meet some somebody and tell them, let's go to this clinic and get an abortion and all of that thing, and the poor girl go there and get an abortion. And then she come to my church two Sundays later, and I'm gonna stand in the church and say, you're a murderer. Lord have mercy. I, 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 I can't see how we can see that. Did she do wrong? Yes. In fact, there's a solution to her wrongness, and I'm not taking a scallop. Is to ask God to forgive you. He's faithful. He's just. And we should then get a house somewhere to find somewhere to take care of that, and find a family for that baby and take care of that bed and turn her going around cursing people out. God loves us. This I know. Okay, let, let me round this up here. Where do you stop at in terms um, of? I stop at uh, let's see. It was um, in uh, First Corinthians? Yeah, it was 13. Okay. All right. It's just um, I got some little complications because I'm using my cell phone. Okay. Okay. So um, we stopped at First Corinthians, uh, verse number um, five. Keep. So, yeah. Okay. Reading it up. Read them all. I'm gonna conclude. It does not dishonor. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrong. Love does not delight in evil. Um but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Verse eight, love never fails, but where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be still. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part, but when completeness comes, 
what is in part disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put the ways of childhood behind me. But now we see only a reflection as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. Read the last one there. Now, this is the finish. now, these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. That's the point I'm trying to make. That's the point I'm about trying to make. I'm trying to make the fact that love covers a mother to the sand because that's what he came for. They shall call his name Jesus. That was embarrassing for Mary. It's embarrassing for Joseph. It was painful for Mary. It was painful for Joseph. But God had a purpose that he could incarnate himself. Look what I'm trying to say, preachers, teachers here. When things is tough, go to love. When things get confused, go to love. And everything is locked up in that Trinitarian thinking. There is, there is no single word for truth. Truth got to be approved by two earthly witnesses, and Jesus himself makes the third. And so truth is what we're looking for. Truth in our world. And that truth would be, we, it's easy to say, it's easy to say, but God came to help us. Teachers, learners, know what you know and try to explain what you know to people. Don't become even dogmatic in that. Don't become dogmatic in that. Uh, I think one of the first open door to truth is to hear to hear, to hear the word of the Lord. That's why the Bible says, God who at sundry times and died of man, spoke in time past unto all people by the prophet. But in these last days, he's speaking to us by his son, whom we have made heir of all things, by whom we also made the world. He, Jesus, being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, and when he had by himself purged us and purges us, this is in heaven. And he purged us at the cross. By himself. It's not by works of righteousness that you have done, but according to his own love and grace, he saved us. And grace is overflowing. The cup is always full. The cup is always full. The cup fills itself, itself up. It, it, it never, love, never, grace, never use, lose its shame. And, and grace is love supersized. Grace is love mystified. Great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifested in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of those disciples and those apostles, preach reconciliation to the Gentile and received up to heaven. Good friend, this is incarnation of speaking, preaching. If you go that to teach, as you prepare your Sunday school class or your Bible school class, you're always asking the question, answering the question, 
The old question, why did he come? Why did he come? As it is written in the volume of the book, to do God's will, and what is God's will? He's carrying his love to the nation of the world, to the people of the world. He said that just before he ascended. He said, I got power. We found a God that has power. And he said, all power in heaven and in earth is in my hand. Go therefore and preach the gospel. That is the gospel, my friend. That is the incarnation. That's not just spouting out what you know, but listen to God. Because listening to God is prayer. And prayer and lament is taking care of my foolishness. I'm lamenting over my blindness. I'm lamenting over my racism. I'm lamenting over me turning Black Lives Matter into racism for white folk. Oh, Lord. Black Lives Matter, White Lives Matter. Let's don't sing it all out. Cause that's God. Life is of God. I hope we can hear that. I hope you get on Jack. I hope you learn how to talk to people without being jacked up and jacking them up. But otherwise we're gonna keep killing each other in the street. We're gonna keep dying of uh, this COVID-19 and we're now fighting about that one. We're now fighting about that one. We're so fighting about it, uh, we don't have time to, to fix it. The other nations are trying to fix it. I'm ready now for uh, uh, some questions. Uh, so I have come to the end of my knowledge. I didn't come to the end of my knowledge. I didn't use my out. So, Let's be respectful of the people around us, people. So I want your good question. Don't take a whole minute to ask the question. Get to it as fast as we can, because I really want to hear from you. Okay, I really do want to hear from you. So if you've got creative thoughts, uh, let's get at it. Uh, Chris Fowler has uh, a question. And um, Chris, you want to ask your question? You want to unmute yourself and ask your question, please? Sure. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I wrote it down there, but as you were talking, Dr. Perkins, <coughs> part of me, I was just thinking about, you know, what could proactive Jesus-shaped love look like in these troubled days? Uh, more than just being passive, but actually intentionally trying to do something to reach out and to bridge a divide. It was that that's our work. That's our work. That's our work. I, I'm really trying to say show respect and try to affirm the other person's dignity and save each person's pride. And the song says, they will know, they will know we are Christian. Whatsoever is good, whatsoever is wholesome. Paul would say to the Corinthian, not the Corinthian, to the church at Philippi, he would say to them, they would bond in beating, and they would bond in washing each other's wounds. That church would bond. The Roman beat them up. And when they came to know Jesus Christ, they said, what must I do to be saved? And he said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And he gets a light and go down and wash their wounds. We need to be washing each other's wounds. I try to do that. I talk in the elevator. I go in the elevator, go into the doctor with this cancer every once a month. And I started talking about love, people don't talk in elevators. 
and, and people always sort of respond good. They respond good. So you you ask it. it it's 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 living life with meditating upon the Lord day and night. And 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 the good question, I don't know how you ask it, uh, because if I ask say that you is a sinner first, the person gets te teed up because they think I'm saying I'm better than you. So it's hard. So you really got to do something in words and in deeds. You almost have to do something. Now, you are not doing this for you to be saved. Somebody have already done this for you. They don't show you. Now, you are trying to show what Jesus would do and really, Jesus is wanting you to do an act of love. And I find out I get response everywhere I go, everywhere I go, because I'm so intentional. I'm so intentional, saying, and, and I say it in a way that they can hear. I, the person, I do see color. I'm not colorblind. When I see a white person, I want to love that person. When I see a Hispanic, I want to love that person. When I see a black, now this is me. And, and this is me. I, I, I know there are words for that. You just an Uncle Tom. Well, I'm an Uncle Tom. I like Uncle Tom. I like Uncle Tom. You get, good. You get, you get kicked off of Twitter for, that, for saying that word. Yeah. No, oh, well, I understand. I understand. I understand. That's what I'm trying to. What my word, my new word, is jacked up. Right here. I like that. Uh, people are jacked up. Y'all are jacked up. I'm gonna say it to y'all. I think y'all can take it. You are jacked up about these political statements. You're jacked up about this, this racial thing. You jacked up. We're jacked up about abortion. We are tense. Damn it, we, we are mad. We need to be loving. How, how do you not be jacked up over it? I, I think loving God, giving more of your attention to what is good, what is holy, what is right? What can I do for somebody else? Uh, it, it is a giving. It is giving. It's the gift that gives. It's the gift that gives. It's the gift that shares. They say you really can't love without giving. So that that's sort of it. Is that follow? Uh, well, I see that uh, a lot of people are commenting on uh, Ron's fan comment. And Ron, would you... Uh, um, like to explain, uh, give some follow up to that. Ron's fan. I think he's off right now, but he's on. So, but Chris has a question. Chris. Yeah. Dr. Perkins, I remember we uh, one time you said to me the the black church we sing our pain, and you talked about lamenting a little bit on the call today, and I I'd like to know your thoughts and how can the predominantly white church learn to lament and enter into the pain? Uh, That's good. Really getting to know God and getting to know each other. That is what it means to be converted. Now, how we do that is left listen for an opportunity. Uh, and in and, and the biblical case, if I tell you, it looks like it's an accident sometime. I was thinking about an incident when I moved to Jackson. I became friends with uh, six or so uh, very well-to-do businessmen, and the rest of them were preachers. They was well-to-do too. They was white. And, and we were trying now to overcome uh, racism. They had been to Men in Hall, and it was a few of us had got together there who after we've been beaten in the jail and all of that. And we was, was gonna try to love white folks. 
I remember, and I think about it this morning, we met at a downtown hotel. A black friend had come down from Washington to, to visit me. He was one of the leading black men in Washington, D.C. He was a Christian. He had one of the high profile jobs. And uh, 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 one of the other guys was a president of men and company. These were some rich people. And we met with some rich people down here. We became, I became friends to all those brothers. I became friends to all those brothers. And, and they're still dying. Few of them left. Most of them are gone to heaven. And the black guy who was a, the star, oh, no, these other were rich, but they were, they were stars of them. And, and the black man started singing, Jesus loves me, <laughs> this I know, for the Bible tells me so. One of my friends mocked me after it, that I had brought them together to hear that simplistic thought, and he laughed. That brother has been supporting me ever since then with his money almost every month. It's accident, it's almost. It's inspirational. That's what I'm getting. And it's not just money. It's giving what you have in your hand oh, to help someone else. Money is the expression of a chain. I can get sort of think and get what I want with money. That's what makes money so powerful. So is, it, that, is, that, is that the chain that happened um, with your white brethren who, uh, the change that happened in their life is it, that they have begin to focus more not on themselves, but on helping those who are less privileged? And, and I have found that they are open if the God speak to them. I think it's God speaking to us. Hmm. I, I think us meddling our heart in a way that God speak. Bill Bright says something, one of my friends, he said, Preaching the good news of the gospel is sharing that truth in God, Holy Spirit power, and losing and leaving the results to God. You get the idea? Speaking is inspirational. Speaking a central truth out of redemption, incarnational, you have put it on the water. You have put it in the wind. And so speaking is not me over persuading you. You are speaking with the Holy Spirit that will help you, and that's the mission the Holy Spirit is on. It's real God. That the Holy Spirit is God is here. God is now. When light is created, darkness is a spell. When truth is proclaimed, push down to the earth, it will rise again. So you don't really convert people. That's what we're talking about. That's the Holy Spirit's work. It's the Holy Spirit's work. Now, you do all the tenderness with the hope of that. You get the idea? Because faith, hope, and love. These three taken together, you got a three people. People, you got something here. And then God being in the mix of it. God being in the mix of it. So you have to speak it with hope. And you have to believe it is. You have to believe it is. He that come to God must believe there is a God. Uh, a longing. A longing that only God can feel. And that's filled with the real friend. It's filled with Jesus as our friend. What a friend we have in Jesus. All of our fears and sins he bear. What a privilege it is to carry everything to God in prayer. 
Folks, this is the gospel. This is the story. Tell me the old, old story. Will be my theme in glory. Tell the old, old story of Jesus and his love. Okay, somebody else. Curtis, Curtis Artist has a question. Go ahead. Go ahead. Unmute yourself, Curtis. All right, thank you. Hi, Dr. Perkins. Um, you know, I have some black friends that are totally disgruntled with the lack of unity in the family of faith and churches. And the perspective is in America, we've never been united in the first place. So how can we reconcile? Uh, what's your response to that attitude? Yeah, I, 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 I feel it's a little bit babble. They haven't thought about these things enough. Uh, there are some things you... People it, blinded by their anger or... Yes, yeah. They meditate. It's that hurt. It's that a little bit jacked up. And so we sort of like to be jacked up. I go by the bus station. I go by the, used to go by the, where the little girls, high school, what the girls called each other. They called each other what the rappers and drug pushers called them. Yeah. And you would think they hated each other, and they're, they're going to plan after that. Their, their dignity has not been affirmed. They wasn't in love. They thought love was this stuff. They thought love was their body only. And and the thing is that affirmation of dignity has to do with empowerment. It, it, and, and when you don't have, feel empowered, um, then you feel some kind of way. Let's 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 take you. You're right. Let's take it out of Babylon. Empowered. You got the empowered one who's knocking at your heart's door, wanting to come in. All power in heaven and in earth is in. I'm, I'm talking from some power to that. that, that that's what you find when you find God. You find the Almighty. So it's a misunderstanding of, of worth and value. And, and God, you, you guys going to just give you a whole lot of money. Well, he going to do that. He can do that. I mean, I, I heard what you're saying. Mm -hmm. He can do that. It like, ain't like, really the money. It ain't really the money to the person who we're talking about. It's what the money will buy. And, and that's junky. That's junky. You know, so it's, it's, it's language too. It's babble. Somebody said, money is good and money is the answer to all things. That's Babel. Most of my friends who got money, they usually say to me that they got something from me and that's why I'm your friend. That's why I'm your friend. Chris, you used to help me significantly in terms of money. And now you don't have no money. I don't have much. We didn't have much to start with. We still love each other. For me, and that's why we still love each other. And that's the most precious. Need your felt needs at the time. Oh yeah, all of my friends, all of my friends, all of my friends, all of my friends. It ain't, ain't nothing wrong with that. What's the felt? We all not. To, we all not cheap. We all not to tell them we want the more money for this and doing this, and we cheating and all that kind of stuff. Uh, we, ought to, we ought to do it the best we can. Manage it the best we can. Uh, and, 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 and most of my friends want me to live okay. Most of them want to help buy me a shirt. And I would almost rather buy my own shirt. You know, they want to buy me a necktie. I don't really like that like ties. I like the one I buy. But you like those suspenders though. Right. 
But just give me the word. Give me the word. Give me the word. They're watching right now together. Yeah. Mar Mar Marga has a question. Marga France was raising her hand. Uh, let's keep going. Uh, yeah, I, I've been listening, and uh, I love hearing what you're saying, JP. Um, and I think, you know, I guess my, my, my thing is, and you, you mentioned that, you know, this fight between everybody, um, Republican, Democrat, and all this stuff, you know, just, you know, how do we just get away from all that? And, you know, I mean, I, you know, I know there's no easy answer other than love, but what do we do in this season right now when, when it's, everything's falling apart and, you know, people going at each other, you know, Republican, Democrat, because it's a political thing and all this. How do we just get away from that and just say, you know, you know, how do we, you, you, you want to be a part of the solution, but I don't want to be a part of the problem. Uh, yeah, it's hard. It's hard because I find myself wanting to know in the news. I flip it on too many times. And, and, and boy, they, they will jack you up. <laughs> they will think you need all this stuff. And they'll make you like you. They will put the kind of movies on your, up before you in front of that commercial. I, it's a difficult deal. It's a difficult, it ain't no easy solution to this dilemma. And, 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 but I, I believe that when you obey a little bit of God, I think God loves that so much, he gives you some more of it. And so I think it's somewhat loving God. I, re I really think, and it's not, taking it too personal. That's when we get jacked up. Even with the good, we take it too personal. That, that, that's why uh, truth needs to have a little mixture in there. Because when you're going after truth, you can almost feel it. I can almost feel when I want to over-exploit people. I don't want to do that. I I don't, I'm not quick about asking my friends for money. They usually ask me, can I help you? You know, I'm not too quick on it. I'm not too quick. I want them to want to do that. Lord have mercy. That feels good. That feels good. When Vera may love me, just love me. And, and, and most I love now is just that. At 90, most I love is not greedy love. That's a good feeling. And, and, and when I'm with my friend all the time, I, I, I wish Roy was on there. He might be on there. When I, we be together all the time, he tells me how much I help him and how much he helps me. We help each other. We help each other by sharing ideas, sharing our love. Well, Roy, uh, oh yeah, that's Roy Rogers. He's still on. I got a lot. We got a lot of Roy's on. I here. don't want to say um, but but Gary's still holding that. Uh, that you 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 had to take that coat. G Gary <laughs> still got his grandfather. His dad. His dad. Leather coat. Coat, and I even I didn't tell Greg. My daughter would wear that coat. Other folk would wear that coat when they go out. Women would wear a man's coat because it was his daddy's beautiful coat. And I, I didn't, I was a visiting one time and I didn't have a coat and I bought it and never bought it back. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead, let's, let's keep going. Um, was that Mar uh, Mr. France that just asked that question? Because I saw, I saw, um, yeah, yeah, that was me. Thank you, Dr. Perkins. Go ahead. You gonna say something? No, he he, he just asked his question. Okay. All right. Is there anyone else who has a question? Uh, Ron Span. Oh, he's off. He's gone already. Um, well, I see a lot of amen and truth. And um, and just and a uh, good thing on here. 
But uh, but JP, someone wants to know uh, what were you going to share from Hebrews? Oh, oh, I like to share those. Uh, he that comes to God, I quoted a lot of time. Mm -hmm. uh, I like that one. I I think in incarnational. I think of redemptive truth. I think of verses like being, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption, faith, and grace. Being justified freely by his grace that is in Christ Jesus. That justification is something we don't understand. It means every time I confess my sin with sincerity, he forgives me. It's like God is waiting to forgive me of my sin if I confess it. And then it, the verse to go with that one, being justified freely. You know, I'm just as if I'd never sinned. God trusts me again. Oh, Lord. God trusts me again. And I have to ask myself a lot about what is my motivation. And when I find that my motivation is off limit, and it get off limits sometimes, I try to get my mind on Jesus. And I try to get him on his redemptive love, that he don't want me to have the sin. He don't want me to think like that. He want me to have his mind. Let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. And then he tells what he went through. He went through a lot. And we he tolerated us. He forgives us. He gives us another chance. Oh, I love this guy. I don't have to walk around all jacked up. God loves me. He bids me to come to him. He takes my sin upon himself and he bright beckons me to enter into other people's sinful ways, not doing those things, enter into their life. And when we are ready to take some of the pain of the suffering people we see, when we really enter that pain, and do whatever we can do. That's what Henry Noun said. You're ready. You are hearing the beckon of God. I got some guys, friends of mine, out in Arizona. They got one of the great feeding programs in the country. And they came down here and we were trying to get it together before this thing hit. I was trying to get, they were closing up a lot of our hospitals. And one of the things that they didn't have was enough food. And I was trying to, before this thing hit. They are doing it now still. And, 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 and groups now uh, of work, I felt that we need to be in the hospital and they were closing these rural hospitals in Mississippi. That just broke my heart because I spent much of my time organizing clinic in Mississippi in my, when I came down here from Mississippi, six to, six to two or three years ago. Uh, so try to let your heart be brought with the thing that breaks your heart. I was trying to get in my, when I came down here from Mississippi, six years ago. Oh, somebody was playing one of your videos, but you can mute yourself. All right, so um, so now is the, the fruit of the spirit what you um, uh, put out to the world and the armor is what you put in? Oh. The, the fruit of the spirit is, and the arm of God is the, the, the fruit is like the soul went out the soul. Okay. Well, the fruit of the spirit is those virtues mm -hmm. that makes us stand. Love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness. Right. Goodness, and then faith. he is thinking about that. The put on the whole arm of God is looking at a Roman soldier. That's the illustration. Mm -hmm. 
and went to the that's soldier. For us. That's for us. To help us stay strong. We, we are protected. If, if these be in you, put on the whole arm of God, that means to go forward carrying the gospel message. It's no back armor. Mm -hmm. It's all, it's the back, it's the front that protects it. Mm -hmm. And so those are two of the same, same illustrations. And we're gonna, we're, when, when we close, we gonna pray that prayer, the armor. So um, that's gonna be our closing prayer today. That'll be beautiful. That'll be, and that's what we are saying. God got us covered. I'm now at 90. I'm having a and having cancer. I'm interacting with God all the time. When a mosquito comes in my room, man, I try to get rid of them. Oh, I hate those things. You know, uh, I'm, 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 so, but, so meditate upon the Lord mm -hmm. day and night. That's another illustration. You'll be like a tree planted by a fruit tree planted by the rivers of water. Those fruit trees are also in heaven, and it's fruit there for every month of the year. You know, and so these are illustrations. And the parables are divine truths. And, and the parable do two things. It enlightens the enlightened. It become a riddle to the person who want to use it for their own advantage. So you hear it. If you're designing it, you're confused with what it is. But the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit salted yeah. that out. He, he, right. he salted that out. That's what we he want. He converts it like a computer. He translates right. he's, it. Uh, he is like my Sarah. Siri. Okay. I like her. I like her. Sir, tell me this. And she tells me this. I like her. She know almost everything. She got five different ways to tell you. Yeah. yeah. OK. <laughs> I'm right. about ready to quit. Go ahead. Uh -huh. we, we can go 30 more minutes. No, we got we got about uh, 10, 10 more minutes. We can take one or two more questions, and then we'll close. Um, and so, let's have a little prayer time. Okay. All right. And uh, next week, our guest will be um, Nick Hall of the Pulse Movement in Minneapolis. And, um, and uh, he was right there in the neighborhood where George Floyd was uh, murdered. And uh, and so he will be with us next week, and that should be very, very, very interesting. That'd be very, good to listen. Yeah. Let's let's so, listen to what he has to say. I've been trying to cover people. One of my early blogs, I had to pastor a largest church in Mississippi, white, and 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 he is trying to. He is breaking through with his love of God and loving each other, and wants his church, his churches. I think it's six of them to be mission of churches. Mm -hmm. you, you know, mm -hmm. it ain't much they can do now mostly with food with these people is distributing food. And people are doing a good job of that in Mississippi. But well, it's not an overnight thing, especially when it's so deeply rooted here. Yeah. In the and island. then then we got the football players and the owners on. I had them because they changed the Mississippi flag in a week. They came out and said, oh, that's on the week that we've been trying to change for years. They change it in a few days. And so look at here. Reconciliation is God at work in us. We are ambassadors of reconciliation. Don't get jacked up about that. God was in Christ reconciling the world. Then aren't you looking at me like you believe that? We've been doing that for so many years. Amen, bro. Other. And 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 and, and I, I'm I'm gonna love everybody that come along. I'm gonna try my best to. And I'm gonna say that with black folks, white folks. If you get jacked up, I don't like it. I like you better when you're not jacked up. You wanna you wanna be the first one to love and and and, and be the one who is over love. And, 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 and my friends are doing that back to me, so I ain't fussing. Most I see, I see my girl from Mississippi there, Duke. Duke. Sherry, Duke. That Duke, isn't it? Sherry. Yes, Sherry. Hey, brother John. Hey, I like you, girl. I love you. 
I, some girls was talking to me one time. I done told this story many times. Black girl knew me, and the white girl's her friend was their friend. And when she came up, saw me somewhere in the hall, the black girl come up and hugged me and kissed me. And the white girl said, ah, she wanted me to love her. And I turned to her and I said, I like white sugar, black sugar, Mexican sugar. I like all kind of sugar. Brown sugar. Brown sugar. I like all kind of sugar. I, that's what that's I want to so be. I don't see no value. Mm -hmm. I don't see no value in hating people. I, it's a native for me. I would be a poor guy. I'm not poor. I'm not poor. Because I got Dave Barrington. He live in a communal community. If they want to help me some, all they do is miss two meals and fast and send me the money. Or, or send you the people. Or send me the people. And send me the people. What, so what, so what I they, like they, that. They you through? My dear, here, I'm looking at this black girl down there. I, 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 I love you. What her name is on there? I, I couldn't see if she went off. Okay. But anyway, um, let's take some time now and um, and and pray. Okay. And um, and uh, um, and as we pray throughout the week, we need to be praying for our country, uh, for everything that's going on, from the fire to the floods to hurricanes. Um, it, there's so much. We're caught in pretty much the perfect storm, the what well, was horrible storm of, uh, of life here in America, and, um, and um, God promises that he'll be with us. He will okay. carry us through this, so. I saw Roy, so I saw Roy Rogers on there. He's up near those fires. And so, Roy, we are praying for you and praying for your wife, okay. praying for the joy that y'all can have together at this uh, crucial time. Uh, in in life, and, and I'm saying that really to all of you out there, Chris Fowler, and all the people out there. Uh, we need to be praying for each other and praying for the lost in the world. Uh, so let's have prayer. Okay. Make it short. No, I'm, so, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, oh, go ahead. pray this on, on my prayer. Okay, you gonna pray it? Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna pray it and read it. It's, it's pretty okay. long. Do it. Okay. Okay. okay, all right. Um, pray with me now. Dear Lord, I now follow your command to put on the full armor of God because my battle is not against flesh and blood, but, but against rulers, authorities, the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the unseen world. I, pray, I first pray on the belt of truth that it may be buckled around my waist. May I be centered and encircled by your truth, dear Lord. Help me inside all that he is that is true and right. And may I protect, may I be protected and held up by the truth of your living word. I pray on the breastplate of righteousness. Please protect my vital organs and my inner man. Cover and woman. Cover my integrity, my spirit, my soul. Guard my heart, for it is the wellspring of life. Please strengthen and guard the most vulnerable places in my life with that which is right, good, and noble, that I might not receive a fatal blow from the enemy. I pray on the gospel shoes of peace. I choose to stand in the shoes of your good news and on the firm foundation of Jesus Christ, the solid rock. All other ground is sinking sand. I pray that I will not slip or fall, but that my feet would be firmly fitted on your Lordship, Jesus. I choose to stand on you so that the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard my heart and mind in Christ Jesus, the rock of ages. I receive your peace now, Jesus, from the sole of my feet to the crown of my head. I pray the shield of faith into my hand now as I take up the shield of faith 
I ask that you might extinguish every dart and arrow that is launched from the enemy to take me down spiritually, physically, mentally, or emotionally. Every attempt of the enemy to destroy my joy, I ask that my faith in you would make it flame out. Extinguish every flame and arrow that will come against me, my family, or my ministry. May my faith always be out in front of me like a shield. Give me the courage to face my fears, like courage to face my fears by choosing to walk by faith and not by sight. I pray on the helmet of salvation that you might protect my mind from the thoughts that can lead me astray. I choose to take every thought captive and arrest ill-intentioned ideas and motives that would harm others or distract me from your will for me. I submit every captured thought to the Lordship of Christ and ask that you would imprison those thoughts that are not of you, Lord. Transform my mind and renew my thinking that I may think God's thoughts and have a sober mind that is focused on your glory. Please protect me from being double-minded that I may allow my mind the command center for the rest of my body to be saturated with the mind of Christ. Finally, I take up the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. I pray this offensive weapon into my hand and ask that your word would be fitting for every encounter I face. As the enemy gets close to me, please give me the insight, wisdom, and skill to well the word of God spoken in season and out of season to inflict pain against the enemy. May the enemy and his team flee from me upon hearing the word of God spoken by the power and direction of the Holy Spirit. Give me the sword of the spirit to cut through the wiles of the devil so that I may discern the schemes of the enemy when he is near. With all kinds of prayer, supplication, and intercession, I pray to you, Lord, as the one who fights my battle. Now that I'm in your armor, I walk away from this prayer covered and ready to face my day as you go before me and protect me in the midst of the spiritual warfare in this unseen world. Thank you, Lord, for the spiritual weapons of armor and prayer that you've given me. No weapon formed against me shall prosper and you will refute every tongue that accuses me. Thank you, Father, and I am more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen and amen. I'll see y'all next week. All right. Thank you so much. Okay, uh, and we're going to sign off. Thank you.